Hey guys, and welcome to this week's reading vlog. I am actually just running home from, like on my lunch break right now from work, but I wanted to update you guys on what I am reading. So you guys saw that I picked up The Betrothed by Kira Cass, so I have started that one. And then I am listening to I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. I will pop my picture up here, and I'm really enjoying that one so far. So I, I'm going to update you guys tomorrow, but I'm already about four hours into I'll Be Gone in the Dark. Um, so I'm about 41% of the way through. Really, really enjoying that one. It's my first true crime book. And I don't really have an update for Betrothed because I'm like 10 pages in. So that is my Monday update and I will see you guys tomorrow. Hello, it is now Wednesday at about seven o'clock and I wanted to update you on my reading. Also, can we just appreciate the air quality is getting, it's still bad, but it's getting better. And I'm like, thank goodness, because if you guys don't know, I live in Oregon and <laughs> Oregon's been on fire. So we just went from hazardous to be outside to very unhealthy, which is still bad, but it's getting better. So I'm very thankful for that so so back to my updating i have read about seven, 65 pages into the betrothed this is super easy to read like all kira cast books are and i don't know why it's so easy to read why how does she do that how does she make all of her books easy to binge but it's very easy to binge um it's not super great. <laughs> um, it feels very juvenile. Maybe that's just like the market though. So I'm trying not to hold out against the book. But it's it's it feels very juvenile. I'm really trying to get a idea of the age of the king because she seems like she's like 16, right? So the, the whole book is about a king and a queen, or a king and, you know, a suitor. Yeah, someone can suit the, be a suitor to the king. Um, who is trying to win the affection of the king. And then of course there's a bunch of girls who is trying to appeal to the king to get that queen's spot. So she seems like she's like 16. He seems maybe a little bit bit older but not much I mean they seem both the same maturity level maybe he's a little bit more because of his position but not much and we just got introduced to like I'm assuming the would-be third triangle of the love interests that I I'm just guessing I haven't gotten that far yet but I'm guessing that's going on but also it talks about like how these lords are coming to her to try to like get her to do favors because she is in good graces with the king and like her parents are wanting to appeal to the king and things like that and like basically sucking up and i'm like how old is he like it, it, i'm just imagining like a bunch of 40 year olds sucking up to a 16 year old and like if he is that young where is his advisors because you know that they wouldn't have like just him running the country by himself. I don't know. I can't figure out how old these these people are supposed to be. Let me know down below if you've read this. Do you, are you at the same page as me? Like, how old do you think they're supposed to be? Do you think the maturity level is a little bit lower? Um, so that is where I'm at. I'm enjoying it. It's like, I don't know. It's a cute cast book. It's like kind of like cotton candy. It's very like fluffy and easy to digest, but afterwards you're kind of like, what? Like where did, what was that? <laughs> so that's what I feel about that. I am also listening to Michelle McNamara's I'll Be Gone in the Dark. This is the true crime book that I had started. I am five hours into it, I'm a little over halfway, I'm at 53%. I've got four hours and 45 minutes left. I'm still really enjoying it. It's definitely like starting to take a few turns like we're getting 
off topic a little bit, I feel, because we're talking about other killers that were happening at that time besides the Golden State Killer that were throwing off the investigation. So it's kind of relevant, but then not in the grand scheme of things. I don't know. So I'm enjoying it. Not as much as I was when I first started reading it, but I'm enjoying it still. So I'm going to try to finish that one soon because that one is going to expire. But that is my update for Wednesday. I'm going to do a little bit of housework and listen to this and I will check back in later. Hey guys, it is now Monday. I did an update. I have now finished I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara and I really enjoyed that, especially for it being my first true crime book. Uh, I found it very spooky and definitely made me like paranoid uh, going outside at night. <laughs> and so I definitely like made it very vivid and I enjoyed it quite a bit. So I ended up rating that one a four out of five stars. Also, if you are a fan of the actor and comedian Patton Oswalt, I'll put a picture up here. Uh, this is his wife, and so he also narrates the end part of it, too. Yeah, I just found it, found it really interesting, and if you guys have any other true crime recommendations, let me know, because I think I could totally get into more of those audiobooks. But I am currently finishing up Your Not Special, or I guess I should say continuing Your Not Special, since I've just finished um, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, so... That is my update. Hello! It is Monday at about 7 p.m. and I am about to take the dog on a walk and I'm gonna go listen to my audiobook which is You're Not Special by Megan Rinks. I was listening to that about two weeks ago and it got returned to the library so I finally got it back rechecked out so I'm about 40% of the way through. So that is what I'm currently listening to. And I'm also in the middle of Betrothed if you haven't seen last week's reading vlog. So that is my Monday update. And I will check back with you guys tomorrow. Hello, it is now Tuesday, um, September 22nd. And I am currently 67% of the way through You Are Not Special. I enjoy Megan as a person. I enjoy Megan as like a narrator. Um, there is some good parts in it, but it's not overall a great book. There's not some, there's some interesting advice column parts in here that I don't like love. I wouldn't <laughs> recommend following that to a T. She's very realistic, so I like that, that there's a point in there that she's like, not everybody is going to love their flaws. Everybody's just like, self-love and that's it. And she's like, that's not realistic. You just have to learn how to live with your flaws. You know, this is, this is realistic. I'm not gonna tell you not to drink because that's not realistic. So this is how you drink. I'm all for being like, I'm not gonna tell you not to do something, but I wouldn't then give you ways to do it successfully. Like, if, if I had to go through the pain of like, <laughs> stumbling through and making those bad choices I'm not going to give people the opportunity to do them well I don't know if that made any sense at all but if you're going to choose to make a bad decision that's on you like I'm not gonna give you a tips on how to make bad decisions well I don't know if that made any sense but I don't I don't particularly love that part of the book so that is that update for today that I'm currently listening to. Also, if you're confused that this is now a two week reading vlog, it's because I just started, I just uploaded my previous footage and realized that that was like not even 10 minutes from last week because I have failed at reading or well, I failed at reading and I failed at updating you guys. So I'm just gonna jam it all into two weeks to give you guys a full week of content. So that's why this is got a weird hello, goodbye, hello. <laughs> so that is the explanation on that. I've got to run back to work, but I'm going to be listening to You're Not Special 
and let's see what if it actually tells me i'm on track to finish this in an hour and 57 minutes and i'm gonna be at work for the rest of the night pretty much so i'm gonna maybe listen to a little bit more but not much so that is my update and i will see you guys tomorrow Good morning, YouTube. It is now Thursday, September 24th at about 9, 9 a.m. And I wanted to update you. So I have finished the book by Megan Rings, You're Not Special. I didn't particularly love most of the book. It was okay. It wasn't like anything that I would go out of my way to recommend. However, the last entire bit about her childhood and the trauma that she went through which i had no idea that she had that tumulus of a relationship with her parents i found that very very interesting and relatable and i kind of wish she would have done like the whole book like that versus like party girl tips and what to do if you're gonna do it anyway type of thing that just felt very raw and real and i and really enjoyed that point part i ended up giving it a three stars mainly for that part of it but like i said i don't think it would be a book that i would go out of my way to recommend people so i am back to picking up the betrothed i i set this down and kind of forgot that i was reading it because i didn't get super far in it i wasn't not enjoying it it just wasn't very gripping i mean i'm only 64 pages into it but it's not a very big book so i'm gonna focus on that one and i happen to look at goodreads the average rating for this book is 2.95 the average rating out of 12,000 ratings. Wow. Wow. And I've, I've like debated whether or not to like really look into the reviews or not to see if it's like going to change my opinion on it. It's basically just saying that it's another selection and people love the selection in its own time. I think it's because it's the same exact author writing the same exact plot line that people are like uh this is i'm not about it but then people did i mean maybe it's just the year for that because i mean twilight how many times has stephanie Maher reread or rewrote twilight so it's just interesting the people that are complaining about it and i'm not disagreeing i don't love that there's already i am 64 pages in and i can already spot the love triangle happening and i kind of thought we left love triangles behind in like 2010 so i mean they've got valid points but i just find it funny the hypocrisy between different authors and what's allowed and what's not allowed so that is what i am currently reading i'm going to take it to work with me and make sure that i get some actual reading done at work on my breaks and we'll see how I feel about this book at the end so that is my thursday update and i will check back with you guys in a little bit hey guys it is now monday october 5th and this is the vlog that's never gonna end so i decided that this is gonna be my very last week of this reading vlog i'm going to then post it because i've been just filming and then just filming another week and editing it and i've been editing it i just haven't posted it so this is going to be my last week and I think I'm going to have like a better rotation coming up soon um, for my routines. So now that things are getting settled with my new position at my job too. So what I am currently reading, The Betrothed, still, I'm not loving this. It's just not like I'm not into it. It's not bad. It's very typical tropey YA. But it's not bad, but nothing's really pulling me back to the story. So, yeah, I'm kind of struggling with this one a little bit. I am on 132 pages. I've got like 170 some left. So, if I sit down, I keep saying this, but if I sit down, I can get through it. I just don't wanna. So, but I'm going to finish it 
because I've got to film other things this week. So it's happening. It's happening. I know, I wouldn't believe my, me either. But for my audiobook, I am listening to Girl Crush, and this is by Katie Henney, and this is really, really cute. So this is, I believe, like my first like significant female female book, um, and I'm loving it. And I'm really enjoying the characters. It talks about moving on to college because that they're the junior or senior year, I believe. They keep talking about colleges, where they want to go. She is uh, a soccer star. So this entire book starts off with um, these two girls who were the only two out girls in their school. They were dating, obviously, and they had broken up. And it takes off from there about how to deal with breakups. Um, dealing with the fact that like the only person who can relate to like you crushing on other people or things like that is your ex so you kind of have to be friends with them and it has a really cute like development story and how they it's just a really cute romance and um how to deal with like exes and things like that and friend groups and there is different like fam familial backstories that are complicated and and things like that and how parents may treat you differently um if they don't expect you to be straight so i'm really enjoying this one so far i cannot i i'm like i am 192 pages in so i'm a good chunk of the way through there and i want to read more queer female main character or non-binary because I feel like a lot of the queer books out there are male male which is great I love them too but I like my women loving women books as well or non-binary so I like just saying queer so I don't want to exclude anybody because I would enjoy all those types of books but specifically of the female or non-binary or female presenting gender or non-gender I hope you guys know what I'm talking about I like male male romances, but sometimes I like to see this. So, I am really, really enjoying this one. I've been listening to this, and I'm going to finish this one, I think, fairly soon as well. Look how cute the back is, too. Like, all the swoons. So, that is <laughs> my Monday update. I'm going to go do some chores around the house and listen to this one and I will check back in with you guys tomorrow. So, I had just finished reading Girl Crushed by Katie Henry and I quite enjoyed it, you know? I just filmed a clip, which you may or may not have seen, I may have edited parts out, saying that I enjoyed it. Because I did enjoy parts of it, yeah. And then I got on Goodreads and I was like, dang, this has really low reviews. Like, what? And so I went to go look at the, the uh, reviews. So many of them were like, I won't touch this book. And I was like, well, that's not fair. You're rating it like a zero stars or a one star. And you haven't read the book. And I was kind of bracing myself for like homophobic reviews. And then I read the reviews. And it's all by bi people. And it's talking about the erasure of bi people and th this may be spoilers so if you're planning on reading this and if you want to read it and don't want to be spoiled skip through here so i will i'll put my hand down when when you can come back so so the main character quinn starts going after this not really going after, but she makes a connection with a girl, Ruby, who she presumed was straight. She like starts to get the flirtations back and then they pretty much get together. They start kissing and, and they, they get together. At one point, she sees this list that Quinn and Jamie, her ex, made a long time ago because they thought they were the only two queer people in their high school. And they made a list, top 10 straight girls that we wish weren't straight. And Ruby was at the top. And then Ruby eventually finds this and she feels hurt by the list and talks about like, why did you presume that I was straight? And they had a really good conversation about that. So I appreciated that. 
and they ask like what the labels like what label she goes by and she talks that she goes by bye and they do all of that and I appreciated that but Ruby fits a lot of the bad stereotypes that bi people get a lot of hate from and the only thing missing is that we don't want to choose or we cheat because that's the stereotypes but everything else is she isn't able to commit she hasn't ever loved anyone she's super flaky not emotive mostly dates guys she's assumed straight because she's pretty and is seen dating guys so she's obviously straight all of those are in here and just like reading some of the other reviews I still enjoyed the content the looking at it more with a more critical eye it's not great it's not great so now that we're out of the spoilery part yeah there's definitely some by erasure <laughs> in here from the main character she does get educated but it's still bad stereotypes in here also the author made some unfortunate comments on Twitter that I was not I was never aware of this this author I had no reason to look into her or these books and it's just disappointing the fact that we're getting into that day and age that we have to vet out the horrible people before you consume and buy things that are supporting them like it just sucks that like people just can't be decent human beings and you know like buy erasure is a big thing in the gay community because we get a lot of hate for that. I don't know. It's just disappointing because this was my first marketed solely female female book and I was really enjoying it and it just was like shitty that that's what I'm getting exposed to. That was my first exposure of a female female book and it was bad. I'm definitely gonna check out We Are Okay but I need a liqueur because I know that everybody loves that book. I suppose I did have a buy book by Leah on the offbeat. So I did have that. But it was more coming of age, not like romance. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just bummed now because I really, I liked all the feels of seeing a female female couple on page. And now I feel like I have to vet out <laughs> what I read. Does anybody else in the reading community feel like this? Because I feel like this is becoming more and more apparent that we have to... We can't just pick up books that are interesting because they're going to go to supporting horrible people. So I think I got off on a tangent, but there's some bad comments on Twitter agreeing with someone else's post about how women who are married to a man are basically straight. And this author's comment was, you are so brave proposing that and it's just like it's just shitty so in case you guys all you know didn't know depend regardless of who you marry of who you date that that doesn't determine your sexuality who you are attracted to determines your sexuality and that's it and it's just shitty that people think that way and gatekeep and Again, the bi erasure. So, this clip is getting long. I'm extremely bummed out. I have no idea what to rate that book now. Thank you for listening to my raw emotions about this. That's my update. I will see you guys tomorrow. No, tonight. I'm gonna finish the book. I'm gonna finish Betrothed. So I will check back with you later. Hello, it is now Wednesday at about 9.30. I know I said I was going to finish this yesterday, but I finished it today. I finished Betrothed. What is this mess? So this entire book is all of the place, first of all, full of tropes. The most instant insta-love that there is and like weird twists that are not explained. And it definitely left off on like an opening for a second book and none of the characters were likable especially the development on the characters were not likable i lie one character was likable and she's like a side side character this was done so poorly there wasn't development it was very one dimensional she she didn't have a clue what she was doing with this so that's my update for right now i do not recommend you checking this book out